Chapter 11 She didn't love me enough to stick around. Vinyl was staring at the bed when Bruiser knocked on the door. For some pony who never suffered from claustrophobia, even he got a jolt from the tension saturating the room. It was like something physical layered on the walls, drawing them in closer and closer. It reminded him of the first time he'd laid eyes on Vinyl, drowsy and draped across the bed's occupant. That was a far cry from now. Vinyl sat bolt upright in her chair, hooves on her lap, like she was deliberately not touching Octavia. Though she was completely still, something in her posture vibrated with anxiety. Her unnaturally ramrod spine gave him pause. Uh, Vinyl? She smiled at him when she turned, but he could see her eyes were puffy. Bloodshot sclera and red irises made for a nightmarish combination, though he thought he did a pretty good job of not reacting. He wasn't champion of his poker circle for nothing. Oh, hi, Bruiser, she said tiredly. You're off work early. Break time. New month, new shift, Rhoda. Hey, are you okay? Me? I'm Hunky Dory, chipper as chocolate, peachy keen. Insert your favorite saying here. Well, you look like crap, and you sound like you couldn't go three rounds with a fruit fly right now. She blinked at him a few times before responding. Thanks. You really know how to improve a girl's self-confidence. Tell me, does that inspirational speech come with a free kick in the face, too? Though her words sounded normal, her voice was rougher than usual. Another indication she'd been crying. He couldn't remember ever seeing Vinyl cry before. She didn't seem the type, despite what Flower had told him. Guilt at his reason for being here shot through his veins like he had received a full hypodermic of the stuff. You ain't combed your mane, you clearly ain't had no sleep, and your accents is nearly as thick as mine, he said. That only happens when you're stressed. You know me so well, Vinyl said dryly. Did you want something, or is this punching bag of a pep talk the reason you're spending your break time with me? Flower was worried about you, Bruiser admitted. For a moment, Vinyl looked embarrassed. Yeah, uh, well, I did kind of snot all over her. Again. She winced at some internal thought Bruiser wasn't privy to. I've just... I got a lot on my mind at the moment. Yeah, I guess so. That sounded lame. He knew it did, but he said it anyhow and then cursed himself for sounding so lame. He could never think of what to say in situations like this. He was good for tossing out rabble-rousers and looking scary, not providing comfort and words of wisdom. He supposed he was going to have to learn how to be softer soon. What kind of daddy would he be if his programmed responses to situations were so limited he answered everything with, Go ask your mother. Hey, uh, Vinyl. Did I ever say thank you? For what you did for Flower, I mean. Huh? Vinyl's expression turned nonplussed. She told me you were the one who found her the day she told me about... Well, I don't gotta tell you since you were outside the door when she told me I'm gonna be a daddy, you know? Her expression cleared. Oh, yeah, right. Probably. I don't remember. Well, just in case. Thanks. Like... A lot. You did a good thing for her. He sucked in a breath. Which is why... Uh, look, Vinyl, I know things are rough right now, but can I ask a favor? She squinted at him. That depends. I'm not giving you my social security number. Ha ha. Lame, lamer, lamest. No, it's Flower's first antenatal appointment tomorrow, and I pulled a day shift on the rota. I was wondering... Would you go with her? What? You wouldn't have to do nothing, he hastily assured, noting Vinyl's eyebrows, which had climbed into her hairline. But I know she'd be glad to have some pony there, you know. Mary Hart's got to do her own shift, so I thought, it's just in the maternity wing, you know. Wouldn't be too far from here, and, well, like I said, she'd appreciate having some pony with her. First time jitters and everything, you know. Flower puts up this tough front, but inside she's just a big bag of nerves about this foal. I really wanted to be with her to hold her hoof, you know, but I can't because it's such short notice to get time off. So I thought I'd ask you because, uh, you're a mare, and she's a mare, and, you know? 
Lame, 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 lame. You know, Vinyl said, was she mocking him? I could take that as a real insult. Not all mayors are interested in foals and motherhood, Bruiser. Oh, crap, he thought. That sounded like a no. Does Flower know you're asking me this? Uh, no, not yet. But you will if you say yes. Vinyl continued to look at him strangely. Okay, she said at last, seeming to come to a decision within herself. But only if she agrees and actually says she wants me there. She averted her eyes and added in a softer voice, After the latest snot fest, I wouldn't be surprised if she wants to keep her distance. She scrunched something in one forehoof, drawing Bruiser's attention. It was a balled-up tissue. There were no boxes of tissues in the room. The tiny rose in the corner identified it as one of those from the tissue box Flower brought to pretty up the nurse's station. Thanks, Vi, he said gratefully. Call me Vi again and I may have to feed you your uniform. Now go ask Flower. I only go with her if she agrees. Go on, scoot. He shook his head as he left. You can take the mare out of the boondocks, but you can't take the boondocks out of the mare. Are you sure you're okay with this? Flower! Vinyl did her best impression of a whiny teenager, separating her syllables and drawing out the vowels in a nasally whine. For the last time, yes, I'm fine with being here. No need to bite my head off, I was only asking. Vinyl's irritation deflated faster than an acid-doused balloon. Flower was nervous enough without her adding another layer of stress to the morning. Sorry, it's just... Vinyl blew out a sigh. You keep giving me looks. Looks? Flower arched an eyebrow. There ain't no tax on looking. Not just looks. Looks. Capital L. Huh? Like you're just waiting for me to go nutzoid again. Or like I'm some baby bird that needs wrapping up in cotton wool because it fell out of the nest and busted itself up. I ain't doing no such thing. You are. You may not realize it, but you so totally are. I... Flower stopped herself. Okay, so maybe the second one has merit, but the nutsoid thing? No way. How about we agree to disagree? Vinyl suggested. Since we're here. The maternity section of the hospital was plastered with comforting freezies of cutesy things that made a deep-seated part of Vinyl want to retch. Fluffy bunnies frolicked with adorable ducklings beneath rainbows, clouds, and smiley-faced sunshines. If the sun were to have any face, Vinyl reflected, it would be that of Princess Celestia. Vinyl felt like the adorable eyes were watching her as she tramped down the corridors, wondering what she was doing here. She made no secret that she was as maternal as a smack to the face. Phillies and colts, those she could deal with. Helpless little foals, not so much. Flower hesitated at the swinging double doors. We're early. Maybe we should go back and... No. No way. You're getting your butt in there. Vinyl all but shoved her through. Inside the maternity wing was just as ootsy-cutesy with the addition of kittens playing with puppies. The dog's little pink tongues indicated their happiness at the sudden arrest of several thousand years of mutual hatred. The arrows on the floor told Vinyl and Flower which way to go. Vinyl trotted into the lead, dropping her face when Flower's hooves began to drag. Flower, what's the deal? Nothing. This just makes it real. Flower shot her a watery smile. No wonder Bruiser had wanted Vinyl to come along. Flower was clearly terrified, though she hid it well. Only when Vinyl met her eyes did she see the naked fear glistening there. It was the same fear that struck all new mothers at some point, though Vinyl could not know that. All she knew was that her friend was scared, and she wanted to make what was scaring her go away. Vinyl searched for something comforting to say. Nothing came. In the end, she voiced the first thing her brain threw up. Hey, do you think cheese smells yellow? Flower blinked at her. I... huh? What? I think it does, but maybe it's just me. What does that have to do with anything? Are you thinking about cheese right now? Well, yeah, but I don't... So you're not thinking about being here, right? Flower stopped walking altogether. No, I wasn't. There you go, then. So, what do you think? Does it smell yellow to you? This time, 
Flower's smile was more solid. Orange, actually. Orange? So what do oranges smell like? They smell yellow. What? No way! They continued on, chatting about foods and smells and colors. The arrows on the floor led them to a waiting room and a kindly unicorn receptionist who took Flower's details and told them to take a seat. After a few minutes, she brought over two clipboards. I just need you to fill these out. It shouldn't be too long before the midwife can see you. Flower accepted the clipboard from the glowing pink telekinesis. Vinyl just stared at the one in front of her. I have to fill out a form, too. Just some personal details. All prospective patients do. Understanding flashed through her, followed closely by embarrassment. She stuttered. Uh, I, I'm not... I, I mean, I'm just here because... The receptionist blinked at her and withdrew the clipboard. Oh, I'm sorry, I just assumed. The father can't be here today, Flower said without looking up from what she was writing. Vinyl's with me for moral support. She finished with a florist signature. Will he be attending the prenatal classes? The receptionist inquired, accepting the clipboard back. Yes, Flower replied. Then he'll need to fill out this form at the first of those. Thank you. Vinyl watched the receptionist trot away and leaned in to hiss at Flower. She just assumed you and me were a couple. Not every pony is a bigot, Vinyl. Besides, don't you think we'd make a cute couple? Flower pouted sultrily and batted her eyelashes. Vinyl spent an inglorious moment staring, slack-jawed. Then she shook her head. Now nah, you get sick of picking up after me all the time. You can pick up after your own damn self. I ain't your slave. Anyhow, who's to say you wouldn't be picking up after me? Are you kidding? I'm the messiest pony on the planet. <laughs> Bet I could beat you. I once left half a pizza in the middle of our coffee table until the box was glued shut with mold. That ain't messy, Vinyl. That's being disgusting. They bickered good-naturedly until the midwife bustled into the waiting room. One could be forgiven for thinking a small, localized cyclone had entered the building. Vinyl resisted the urge to crawl backwards on her chair when the tan unicorn came to a halt in front of them, stamping her hooves and blowing air through a muzzle as white as Vinyl's own. Half of her face was white, ending in a jagged line of hair beneath her eyes that could not decide whether it wanted to be one color or the other. Hello, 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 she said briskly. Which one of you is Flowerheart? Flower raised a hoof. Abruptly, she found it grabbed as the other mare hauled her to her hooves and led her away. I'm Tempest. Come this way, please. Tempest. It figured. Vinyl scrambled to follow. They passed through yet another door and down a series of corridors that almost left Vinyl wondering whether up was down and left was right. Eventually, they stopped outside yet another set of double doors labeled Scan Unit. In here, please, Tempest said with the same no-nonsense politeness. Thank you. She spoke as if she wished she could roll up the words like a newspaper to smack Pony's hindquarters to make them go faster. Once inside, she gestured Vinyl into a chair with strict instructions to stay there until told otherwise. Flower hoisted herself up onto an austere-looking bed and wriggled about, trying to get comfortable as she leaned back. Tempest glanced momentarily at her. Then she took a slightly longer look. Wordlessly, she levitated a selection of small compact pillows to prop Flowerheart's back. All right, so today is your first scan? Flower nodded. And you've opted for... Tempest consulted her information. For metamagic imaging. Would you also like precognitive visualizations? Flower took a steadying breath and nodded. Hmm. Tempest checked the form and a stack of notes on a nearby unit. She nodded to herself, shoved the whole lot to one side, and drew a wheeled chair up to the bed. She poked at Flower's forelegs, which were folded across her chest. In an act of no-nonsense awfulness, she reached out and wiggled a roll of flesh on Flower's midriff. According to your info, you're just within limits for body mass. She gave Flower a recriminating look. Just. Flower blushed. It was odd to see the brash, bolshy nurse act so meek. Vinyl didn't like it. The hairs on the back of her head rose in indignation as Tempest continued. A fat mare is more likely to produce a foal with angular leg deformities and is much more prone to difficulty when foaling. Light, regular exercise is good for a pregnant pony. You should take up walking. Low-impact cardiovascular exercise. Do it at least once a day, twice if you can. How are your vaccinations? All up to date. 
Flower replied quietly. What's your diet like? Flower blushed deeply, turning her green cheeks nearly black. Um, it's okay. The truth, please, Tempest interrupted. Flower's eyes dropped to her own folded forelegs. It's crappy. Tempest blew out a sigh as if she had known this already and had been tired of waiting for confirmation. You need to pay attention to your nutrition from now on. No more taking shortcuts just for a spurt of sugar or fat in your diet. You need bulk foods rich in protein, energy minerals, and vitamins. You're eating for two now. That means good roughage. That's high-quality hay, not the cheap stuff, and no, that does not mean hay fries. A balanced concentrate of mash with added chaff and protein is what you need. A lot of my patients recommend tofu or soya for the protein, but don't fry it. Even if that's how you prefer your food. Flower's face had gone lax at the mention of such flavorless, uncompromising fare. Her throat moved, but her mouth stayed shut. Small proteins eaten often are the best. Stay away from three meals a day, especially big meals. You need to regulate your energy reserves. You'll also need to start taking vitamins if you aren't taking them already. I'll construct a program for you after the test today. Speaking of which... Tempest uncovered a tray that rested on a nearby trolley. I'll need both blood and urine samples. You're gonna make her pee in front of you? Vinyl blurted. The look she received from the midwife made her ears lay so flat she was surprised they didn't tickle her brain through her skull. Um, never mind. Ignore me. Tempest drew a blood sample and took care of bagging and tagging it. While she was doing that, she fired off question after question. Flower struggled to feel them all, especially when it came to the ones about Bruiser. Tempest retained her blunt, aggressively polite manner throughout. She also did exactly as Vinyl had asked and totally ignored her. When she gave Flower a sample pot and released her to the privacy of the bathroom down the hall, Vinyl jumped at the chance to leave the room. The bathroom was a single unit with a lockable door. Vinyl waited outside, twiddling her hooves and counting ceiling tiles. Twice. After ten minutes of silence, she called in through the door. You okay in there? Yes, Flower snapped back. Yeesh, I was only asking. Well, don't. The throatiness to Flower's voice betrayed the welter of emotions ribboning through her. I... I'm having performance anxiety. Despite herself, Vinyl held back a snort. Just think of waterfalls, rainstorms, and burst pipes. You're not helping. You drank a whole bottle of soda before your appointment. How can you not need to pee? I don't know, okay? And I'm not really comfortable discussing the mysteries of my stupid bladder with you. Maybe Tempest scared it all so deep inside you that you'll never pee again. Was that a snigger? Final don't. Don't what? Say how awful she is? She's not awful. She's just doing her job. Yeah, but her bedside manner makes Nightmare Moon look warm and fuzzy. Vinyl paused. She placed the flat of each forehoof against her cheek and wiggling them, blowing partial raspberries through her own flapping flesh. What are you doing? I'm making noises like waves on an ocean. You sound like a cat choking on a hairball. In answer, Vinyl pinched and blew harder. Vinyl? Do you need to pee yet? No! I'll keep doing this until it works. Eventually, after much awkward laughter and bits of reassuring small talk, Flower did what she needed to, and they made their way back to the scan room. Tempest awaited them with an expression like her namesake. Nonetheless, her voice remained level as she accepted what Flower gave her and waited for them to arrange themselves back in their previous posts. All right, then, she said at last. Now it's time for your scan. Vinyl expected her to pick up some of the equipment attached to the trolley. Instead, Tempest closed her eyes and ignited her horn. The room light snapped off, leaving the three mares lit only by the soft yellow glow of her magic. Vinyl wasn't sure what was going on. She opened her mouth to ask, but stopped when a beam of sparkling yellow light shot from Tempest's horn to bathe Flower's entire midsection. Flower froze, but not from fear. It was the cessation of motion by someone who knew they were supposed to hold still, like a pony in the dentist's chair when the drill draws near. The light narrowed to a thin band and passed over her several times. 
then coalesced in a ball and rose a few feet into the air above her. Both vinyl and flower watched as a tiny blob resolved out of the glittery mass. It looked like nothing much to vinyl's eyes, slightly rounded at either end with a selection of fronds spraying outwards in various degrees of thickness. One in particular was thicker than the rest. Vinyl stared at it and then realized with a jolt that it was moving. No, it was pulsing. All at once, she comprehended what she was seeing. It's so small, Flower breathed. It doesn't look like much yet, Tempest informed them. But soon it will resemble a foal, as you're used to thinking of them. Nonetheless, my scans tell me there are no significant problems with the fetus at this stage. It seems healthy and is of good size with no major abnormalities that I can sense. Flower released a breath that seemed to come from deep within her. Vinyl understood just how worried she had been about this part of the appointment. Abruptly, she wanted to reach out and hold her friend's hoof, but she was all the way on the other side of the room, goggling like some idiot who had wandered in off the street. As if sensing her thoughts, Tempest turned her head a fraction. You can come closer, you know. Vinyl got up and shuffled over. She peered at the pulsing mass of yellow light, marveling that this blobby-looking thing was a pony in the making. She marveled even more at the thought that once she had been a similar blobby mass just like this one. So had Flower. So had Tempest. So had every pony in the world. Once upon a time, maybe even Princess Celestia and Princess Luna had been blobby masses of cells like this. The notion was at once both chastening and anticlimactic. Hello, little guy, she heard Flower say softly. Or girl thing? Uh, no, that's not a good name for you. Hello there, little one. Do you want me to move on to Precog now? Tempest asked. Actually, Flower hesitated. Actually, I'm not sure. Vinyl looked between their faces. Precog? You mean like precognition? Telling the future? Something like that. The name is a bit of a misnomer, Tempest explained. Metamagic can tell, with some degree of accuracy, the type and sex of the foal in advance. Obviously, the margin of error is greater the earlier into the pregnancy the scan is performed, but there are certain genetic markers that can determine these basic facts. Skull shape, rib cage death, bone density, thermatagical capacity of the red blood cells... Uh, what? Tempest made a clicking noise in the back of her throat, as if she couldn't believe a fellow unicorn would not know this. The potential ability a body shows for channeling magic. The higher the thaumaturgical capacity, the more likely a foal is to be a unicorn, and the more magically inclined the unicorn will be. Oh. Even though there was no way she could have known this, Vinyl felt like she had failed some sort of test. She stayed quiet as Tempest transferred her attention back to Flower, awaiting her decision on whether the precog scan should be performed. Flower bit her lower lip. Bruiser should... I mean, he'd wanna... She hesitated. He did say it was okay to go ahead without him, but... I don't know. Do you think he'd want to know whether you're having a filly or a colt? Tempest asked. Well, yeah. Flower sighed. And I guess he'd be disappointed if I told him I'd find out, and then didn't. Okay, go on. Fire away. Tempest's urge to roll her eyes was so clear it was practically a smell in the room. The glowing yellow fetus dissolved into an array of twinkling dots. These swirled around for a moment, finally mingling and fusing back together. The edges of the shape that emerged were hazy, like one of Willow's pencil drawings, but the shape itself was clear regardless. The smooth head and back were devoid of horn or wings, but there was only one thing Vinyl noticed about the new glowing blob. Flower smiled. Hi there, baby girl. The events of the morning had driven most things from Vinyl's head, making sure Flower was okay and that the fire shoot experience of seeing a foal in vitro had dominated her attention even when she had suspected they would not. It wasn't until they had finished up with Tempest and left the maternity wing that reality started to creep back in. As her hoofsteps took her back through the hospital, closer and closer to room 219, Vinyl's mood nosedived. She did not expect to find some pony already in Octavia's room. She froze in the doorway, not recognizing the large pony sitting in her chair. Flower came to a halt beside her, equally confused. Maryheart appeared from behind the nurse's station. She's here to see you, Vinyl. 
Me? Vinyl switched her stare to Mary, then the stranger, then back again. Who is she? Oh, you'll find out. Something in Mary's tone made Vinyl wonder whether she wanted to. She sounded entirely too knowing and a little like she wanted to laugh. Come on, Flower. I have coffee. You can tell me all about your scans over a cup. I'm not supposed to have coffee, Flower said glumly. I ain't allowed to have caffeine no more. <laughs> Good thing I use the decaffeinated blend, huh? Mary tapped the side of her snout. Two pregnancies, remember? I know all the no-nos. So, is Tempest as awful as she used to be? Flower's eyes widened. She was a complete... Mary drew her away, leaving Vinyl like the last fuzzy target in a whack-a-mole game. For a moment, she considered following them. Then her eyes fell on Octavia, and the idea crumbled to dust. All her conflicting emotions flashed through her, as strong and awful as they had been before Flower's scans gave her mind a brief respite. Well, are you gonna stand there in the doorway all day, or are you gonna come in here? Vinyl's head snapped up. Uh... Child, I did not come all this way to talk to you from the hallway. Get your skinny white butt in here. There was something intensely familiar about this pony, though Vinyl was convinced she had never met her before. Even on first glance, this was not a pony you could easily forget. Vinyl was dwarfed as she drew nearer. This mare made Flowerheart look like the super skinny supermodel Fleur de Lis. She was tall, crowned by a towering mane dew that gave her a further few inches, her curly white and blue mane and tail reminded Vinyl of sea foam, an impression helped by the mare's bright blue coat. It wasn't until she turned to face Vinyl, however, that her familiarity touched on the right memory. So you're the little pony my baby girls made friends with. The gold eyes that held Vinyl were not sapphires, but they were so close it was almost scary. Um. At once, the mare's unimpressed expression cleared like clouds bucked by an expert weather team. Relax, child! Wow, you spook easier than I thought you would! The way my Safi described you, I figured you'd be ten feet tall and made of pure gold! She got to her hooves and held one out, revealing exactly where Sapphire had inherited her love of shoes. I'm Pearl Sands, but you can just call me Pearl. Pearl Sands. Sapphire's mother. Her mother! Oh, crap. Vinyl hesitantly shook the hoof. She even managed not to wince when Pearl's firm shake nearly crushed hers. She didn't think it was on purpose. Subtlety did not seem to feature much in the way Pearl conducted herself. When she moved, she did so with all the pageantry and aplomb of a stage performer in front of a crowd. Her outfit constructed from folds upon folds of loose, shimmery fabric undulated like crashing waves whenever she took a step. In her mane and tail were threaded tiny shells and even tinier gems that had clearly been picked out to match her coloring. She looked like some ancient sea goddess who had risen out of the ocean inside a giant clam and then strutted her way inland until she reached Manhattan General Hospital. Uh, hi, Vinyl managed. Pearl tilted her head. Is that little bit of squeak all you got? Heavens, missy, you'd barely raise the roof off a dollhouse with a voice like that. Vinyl swallowed. Uh, hello, Pearl? That's better. Not good, but better. Pearl smiled. The resemblance to Sapphire increased again. Her smile dimmed a little as she took a step forward and reached out. Vinyl flinched on instinct. Goodness, child, I ain't gonna hit you. Pearl's deep voice ratcheted up in dismay at the thought. Sorry, I, I didn't think that... Vinyl paused when Pearl picked up a hank of her mane. Sweet Celestia, that is terrible. Awful fratful, even. Just look at all these split ends. Not to mention the condition. Have you been washing your hair in bleach for Celestia's sake? Uh, no. Too late, Vinyl realized the question was rhetorical. Well, aren't I just making a brilliant first impression? She struggled to regain what ground she had lost. Saf ne uh, Sapphire never told me you were coming down here today. Uh, it'd be because my baby girl didn't know. Uh, Vinyl blinked. Okay, I'm confused. Now that I can believe. Pearl gave a knowing smile and dropped the piece of Vinyl's mane she had been examining. She trotted back to the chair, pulled it slightly further back, and gestured. Sit. Say what? 
Sit down, child. I'm here to cut your mane. Vinyl stayed exactly where she was. Is this a joke? Honestly, I don't never joke about hair. Your mane and tail are in a shocking state. Deplorable, dreadful, outrageous even. My baby girl couldn't tell you the difference between a color rinse and a curling iron. She has that fancy entourage of hers to take care of that. But even she could tell that much about your mane, don't. She told me last night at dinner, and I knew, just knew, that I had to come right the heck down here and rescue your hair before it was beyond repair. Vinyl was still confused. After all, Pearl continued, I just so happened to be the premier main dresser at Cute Cuts and Curls. A main dresser? Sapphire had never mentioned that. Come to think of it, Sapphire had only ever mentioned her mother in the context of how scary she was. Vinyl was definitely intimidated already, though she supposed some of the scariness came from being a daughter to... Am I gonna have to kick your legs out from under you and sit your butt down myself? Pearl demanded. Cause I can't promise I'd be gentle if you force me to park you like a cart with a busted wheel. What? What are you planning to do to me? Uh, to my mane, I mean. Pearl smiled wide. Magic, honey. Pure magic of the kind you can't learn from books. With that, she crossed the short space between them and propelled Vinyl into the chair. Vinyl sat down with a bump. Looking over her shoulder, she observed Pearl extracting items from a voluminous carpet bag. She used both hooves. Well, of course she would. She wasn't a unicorn, but an earth pony, just like Sapphire. Are you sure you're allowed to do that in here? I ain't planning drastic disasters, child, Pearl responded. Now tell me, when did you last wash your mane? Uh, the day before yesterday? Or maybe the day before? Pearl froze. Seriously? Inwardly, Vinyl cringed. She used to watch it every day without fail, if not at home, then in a preparation chair while Stylus swarmed around her, getting her ready for whatever concert or public appearance she was about to do. In all honesty, she had enough time to keep up a better regime than she had, but had let things slip lately. It just hadn't seemed worth the effort. No wonder it's in such bad condition, Pearl muttered. She snapped the carpet bag shut. Okay, child, where's the nearest restroom? I, I don't think- Ow! Vinyl held her ear, belatedly registering that she had been tweaked. The heck? When it comes to hair, you don't think, child. You just do what Pearl tells you. She got the magic hooves, okay? You gotta trust in the magic hooves. Now, tell me, where's the nearest restroom? Vinyl opened her mouth to speak. Then she thought better of it, and just pointed. Over half an hour later, Vinyl was back in the chair, the roots of her mane throbbing, where Pearl had massaged shampoo and then conditioner into them. It wasn't that she had been especially rough, more that she took the edict be thorough to heart in her work. Her ministrations had been gentle enough that Vinyl's face was never dunked into the full basin of water, but neither was any scrap of scalp left untended. They had used the disabled bathroom in the floor below, since it had more room and a large sink, over which Vinyl had bent forward as Pearl used the meager facilities to the best of her abilities. Thus, it was a damp but very clean Vinyl Scratch who plonked back down into her chair next to Octavia's bedside. Now you just sit still and keep facing forward, Pearl instructed. But what are you... Sit still and face forward. Pearl had no compunction over placing her hooves on either side of Vinyl's skull and showing her where to look when she tried to turn. Good girl. You can trust me. I did all my baby's hair while they were growing up. My appointment book at the salon is always the first to fill. Ponies, they're willing to wait a whole month for me to get my magic scissors on them. Vinyl was more concerned with what those magic scissors were going to do to her right now. Pearl took a comb through the blue mass drooping from Vinyl's head. Her movements practiced and rhythmic. Wet, Vinyl's mane was even longer and easily touched the hooves folded in her lap. Despite her misgivings, she had to admit that some pony else touching her felt rather nice. The comb had stiff teeth, but Pearl never let them dig into Vinyl's head the way Stylus had in the past. A thought struck Vinyl. Are you going to cut it in my old, I mean, regular style? That chopper thing, Pearl said in disgust. She paused. Do you want me to? Vinyl gave it some thought. 
No, she said at last. Good answer. Pearl resumed combing, sometimes stopping to hold the comb vertical, as if measuring Vinyl's mane against it. Hmm. What hmm? Is that a good hmm or a bad hmm? Wow, deja vu. It's a never you mind because Pearl has magic hooves and knows what she's doing more than any other pony you've ever met, hmm. Vinyl couldn't help herself. She let out a short bark of laughter. <laughs> good answer. Always, sweetie. Pearl gave one last rake of the comb and placed it aside. Vinyl heard the tiny shing snip of scissors. Unexpectedly, her stomach clenched. Were those nerves? Uh, don't you worry, child. Pearl enunciated each word with such clarity and forcefulness that it was like having sharpened consonants drill through Vinyl's hooves while the vowels encircled her tongue, preventing any protests. Vinyl swallowed. This was stupid. Since when did she care what Stylus got up to with her mane? She had sat for the best and let them do whatever they wanted, then smiled at the results no matter what she actually thought. Just because she hadn't had a mane cut in a while didn't mean this was any different. It wasn't like she had been looking after her hair, after all. How much could she care, really, if she had failed to do anything about it growing out or getting dirty and greasy until now? Nonetheless, she found herself squeezing her eyes shut at the first snip. Goodness, child, any pony would think I was using a venomous snake instead of scissors, Pearl remarked. You're wound tighter than a kitten in a wool basket. Sorry. Why be sorry? The way I hear it, you got a lot tangling up your head these days. Uh, yeah. Vinyl bit the inside of her cheek. How much did Sapphire tell you about me? Oh, she didn't break no confidences, but she told me enough, Pearl said cryptically. She especially told me not to believe half the stuff in the press about you and your tabby over there. She didn't tell me why she had such a long face when she came to dinner after you saw her last. The day my baby girl don't want to eat her jackfruit casserole nor talk to her mama was the day that Pearl Sands knew she'd got to get involved. So you're here to yell at me for my argument with Sapphire, Vinyl said flatly. No, I'm here to cut your mane. Pearl snipped twice in quick succession and ran a hoof down the back of Vinyl's head, as if making sure something looked the way she had planned it to. Us main dressers, we talk. If you want to talk back, that's fine. Even if you don't, that's fine. I'm pretty good at holding a conversation by myself. I've raised seven teenagers on my own. I'm used to talking to me, myself, and I. Oh, Vinyl said, then sat straighter when her posture began to droop. Sorry. She peeled the words off her palate, unpleasantly reminding her of conversations with Dr. Thorntree. She was getting pretty good at apologizing to parents for how she treated their daughters. If Octavia's parents had been alive, no doubt she would have gone through this with them, too. Big time. Saf and I, we had an argument about dating. Snip. Well, she could do a lot worse than some pony like you. No, me. I mean, me dating. I mean, not me dating her, not us dating, I, I mean... Vinyl was halted by Pearl's resonant laugh. Oh, settle down, child, I knew you didn't mean that. Though she could do a lot worse. You're a good pony. I'd be one happy mama mare if my baby girl brought someone like you home to dinner instead of those wastrels and no good nicks she used to sit down at my table like they were royalty when she was a teenager. Pearl gave a long-suffering sigh. Mm-mm, the stories I could tell you. When you see her next, you ask her about Tangerine Blossom and Orange Blossom. See what she says. I bet my bodacious boots that she'll be beet red and clam up fast as lightning. Who were they? A set of twins she used to date in high school, one after the other. And I swear, the first one passed on that one shared brain cell when they switched over. Not a lick of sense between them. Tangerine actually asked me how old you gotta be to be 21. <laughs> and he wasn't kidding. Pearl gave another long-suffering sigh. That ain't even to mention when she went through her black eyeliner and studded jacket phase. And you know she went bottom of the barrel when she boarded that apple cart. Those ponies' manes would have taken a week of washing to even get halfway clean, and still she treated them like they were related to Celestia herself. Really? Vinyl's ears pricked. 
To hear stories, however short or vague, about the illustrious Sapphire Shores being something other than illustrious were equal parts amusing and confusing. Would she be okay with you telling me this? I'm her mama. I could tell you far worse. But I won't. Pearl snorted. I gotta keep back a little, don't I? I love my baby girl, but that don't mean I gotta pussyfoot around her mistakes. She switched her snips to the left side, just below Vinyl's ear. Besides, I already boxed a few of those ponies' ears when they hurt her. Ain't no pony, no way, no how gonna break my baby girl's heart without her mama busting some heads. When she'd let me, that is. We understand each other, my Safi and I. We make allowances for each other's, how should I put it, quirks, foibles, eccentricities even. That's nice. Vinyl stared at her hooves. Real nice, actually. Pearl's hoof smoothed Vinyl's mane in regular, even strokes. Her touch was gentle. It made the back of Vinyl's neck prickle. She swallowed, and swallowed again. My mom died when I was a filly. Oh, honey, I'm sorry. It... it was a long time ago. She was in a rehab clinic. She actually did really well. Her doctor told me she was one of the most determined mares he'd ever met. Swallow. She got through the first half of the treatment program with flying colors. Swallow. But then... Th then... Swallow. Her doctor said she tried, but she just... She couldn't hap it. Swa... Choke. Cough. Sides of the throat too sticky. Vinyl drew a breath, feeling it wash over the sides of her throat. The words came quickly, like uncorking a fizzed-up bottle. So she cracked open a fourteenth-story window to break the anti-magic wards on it, and teleported herself to the wrong side instead. Cold, clipped, toneless. Pearl froze. Vinyl froze, too. She wasn't sure why she had said all that. In the growing seconds that followed, a vacuum seemed to suck all the air out of the room. She stared so hard at her hooves that they began to blur. Her eyes stung with the strain. Why had she said that? She never talked about that. Indigo had spent hours lecturing her about how she should never talk about that. And to say it to a stranger? She didn't even know Pearl. The last pony she had actually spoken to about what her mom had done was... Tavi. Stupid, stupid, stupid. Oh, honey. Pearl pushed all the air back into the room with those two soft words. It's fine. Forgetting about sitting still, Vinyl waved a hoof. It was years ago. I am over it. Over it? Surprise laced Pearl's tone. Sure. I mean, I loved her and everything, but... But it was years ago. Years. And I didn't turn out so bad. Not really, right? Every pony thought I was a major screw-up because of it. The foster ponies I went to, I mean. But I'm not. Well, I screwed up a few times, but I came back fighting. I... I came back, or at least that was the main thing. I never just gave up. Not on anything. Or any pony. Not on my career, or... Or Tavi, or... I didn't... Even when it was hard, I... I didn't give up like my mom did. There was a noise that sounded rather like glurk as Pearl wrapped her huge forelegs around Vinyl from behind and pulled her into a strong hug. Vinyl wanted to protest. She wanted to wriggle free. This wasn't even what she was supposed to be talking about. Pearl had come down here because Vinyl had argued with Sapphire, and she had argued with Sapphire because of Tavi and Willow, and love and regret and the future and the past and... Celestia, damn it, if I cry again, I'm going to ram my head against the wall until my horn breaks off so I have something to friggin' well cry about. The ceiling fan whirred incessantly in the silence. Pearl did not let go, but she did stroke the top of Vinyl's head and ears the way one might a gentle newborn foal. I miss her, Vinyl said thickly. I don't talk about her. I don't really think about her. It, it hurts too much. I loved her. Love her. She's... She was always my mom. But she didn't love me enough to stick around. Vinyl shook her head. The thought of me sitting in that care home, waiting for her to come get me, it... 
I wasn't enough to keep her going. Pearl squeezed tighter. Sometimes it ain't about that, child. Sometimes it's about being a place so deep and dark yourself that it ain't about not wanting to think of others. You just can't. Even when you try. Even when you know you should. You can't see the bigger picture. Yeah, I know that. I forgave her years ago when I... I went to a pretty dark place myself. After Tavi and I broke up, I kind of understood what it must have been like for her. Feeling so alone, even when she was surrounded by other ponies trying to help her. I just... Vinyl sniffed. I miss her. Times like now, when I hear about how close you and Saf are, I... I miss my mom. She finished in a small voice. She scrubbed at her eyes. Sorry, I didn't mean to say any of that. I, I wasn't trying to make you feel sorry for me, so you wouldn't yell at how I argued with Saf. You hush, Pearl said somewhere above her head. It felt very much like there was a chin balanced on the top of her skull. Who cares if you meant to or not? You said it. Now, you're gonna get a hug, child, because from what I hear, you're owed a whole bunch of hugging. No, I meant... You said you came to cut my mane, but I know you came to talk to me about Sapphire. What made you think that? You're her mom, and you really obviously care about her. You came to see whether you needed to bust my head or box my ears or whatever, right? Pearl paused for a long moment. Maybe. Vinyl smiled. She tasted salt. Friggin' ah! No more crying. No, 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 I'm sick of crying. Tears, get back in my friggin' eyes or I'll... I'll look up a spell to remove my friggin' tear ducts. Seems to me like you got enough bust in your head from the inside out as it is. Pearl went on. Ain't no pony should go through even one of the things you've gone through, child. You're a real strong pony to weather so much heartache. She lifted her chin, releasing her bone-crushing embrace and half-turning vinyl to look at her. But honey, every pony has got their breaking point. Everyone reaches a brick wall eventually. You don't gotta carry everything on your own. I'm kinda still learning that part, Vinyl admitted. I don't think I'm very good at it yet. Good thing I taught myself a tenacity then. She'll come back and see you once you cooled off. Probably bring you a peace offering if I know my baby girl. Bring me a peace offering? But I was the one who was croptacular to her. Pearl raised one elegant eyebrow. Good eyebrows, like shoe love, were apparently a family tradition. What, Tacular? Uh, awful. I was awful to her. Pearl nodded. Better. And she'll bring it because that's the way she rolls. You're important to her. She don't got many friends. Ponies in school were always kind of jealous of her. Then she got picked up by a talent scout straight out of high school and... Well, you know what color friendship runs in the music business. Telling it plain, honey, I've been worried about her for years. I always wish she had some pony she could count on as an actual friend. Pearl pinched Vinyl's cheek like she was a chubby foal in a crib. And you? You I approve of. Vinyl held her sore cheek. Saf was trying to tell me I should date other ponies in case Tavi never wakes up from her coma, she blurted. That's what we fought about. She blinked. Again? What was with her spilling her guts today? Pearl wasn't a unicorn. Could she be one of those shaman things using her magic to make Vinyl say things she had no desire to say? No, you had to be a zebra to be a shaman, right? She said that? Well, not in those exact words, Vinyl admitted. I see. Pearl glanced over at Octavia. She looked for a long, long moment. Hmm... Before Vinyl could say anything, she added, That's a future ain't written yet, you know, hmm. That's what I told Saf. I told her Tavi might still wake up, so I can't risk a relationship with any pony else in the meantime. Is that really what you think? Yes, Vinyl nearly shouted. What kind of pony would I be to go through everything I've gone through, to do everything I've done, just to be a hypocrite and give up now? A hypocrite? I've done everything I've done because I love Tavi. If I give up and say I love some pony else now, that's being a hypocrite. Do you love some pony else? No! 
Could you? No! Truly? Yes. Honest to Celestia? Yes! You ain't never loved no pony but her. Never. Not in any way? No! Not even your mama. Vinyl choked. What? Pearl lowered her eyebrows to a single straight line across her brow. Hmm, cheap shots taste terrible. She stuck out her tongue to illustrate. You said you ain't never, could never, and will never love any pony but your Tavi. Does that mean you don't love your mama? Or that you did once, but you stopped? But my mom... That's different. Exactly. What? Vinyl was confused. Different types of love for different types of ponies, child. Pearl gestured expansively. Every pony knows the difference between familial, romantic, and platonic loves. You don't love your family the way that you love your partner, and the love you got for your friends is different again, but they're all still love. And you can divide each type up even more on top of that. I love every one of my babies, but I also love my clients, my gals at the salon, my own mama, and my husband, Celestia rest his soul. She sighed. Not every pony gets their sincero amore. Their what? Sincero amore. At Vinyl's nonplussed look, Pearl explained, I love you don't got a question. You just know that you love somebody and will always love them, even when you hate them at the same time. That's rare. Most ponies, they grow to love somebody or their friends and a bit more. That's kind of like romantic love, but ain't quite there all the way. Sometimes it lasts, sometimes it doesn't. I've known marriages based on a lot less. Not one of them is a bad pony because they settled for something other than their sincero amore. Vinyl's head buzzed. So, are you telling me to move on too? Don't you go putting words in my mouth, child. But you're saying I'll be happier if I forget about the sincere amarado or whatever I had with Tavi and settle for something less that can still be called love if you squint at it or give it a few years to mature, like... like cheese? A chuckle rippled up in Pearl's throat. You sure do got away with words, sweetie. I'm not saying anything about the best way for you to be happy. I don't know you well enough to say what would be the best way for you to be happy. I'm just saying to you the same thing I say to myself. Happiness ain't getting what you want, it's wanting what you got. So I should be happy with Tavi being in a coma, Vinyl all but spat. Ow! She grabbed her ear. Be glad all I did was tweak it, Pearl warned. I don't appreciate being sassed by some pony putting words in my mouth when I already warned him not to do that. Your life is your own, little Miss Vinyl Scratch. You ain't gonna get me to tell you how to live it, nor should any pony else tell you neither. You think I agreed with every life decision my kids made? No, I most certainly did not. But did I tell them how they should live their lives? No, I most certainly did not. And I ain't gonna do for you what I wouldn't do for my babies. It's your life, your decisions, your heart. All I'm saying is that before you get all head up about what you will and won't do with all that, you take a good look at yourself and what you are and aren't capable of first. Vinyl fell silent. Eventually, when it became clear no answer would be forthcoming, Pearl went back to stroking a comb through her mane. The snip-snip of scissors began to chime once more as Pearl's words chimed through Vinyl's head in tandem with the noise. She didn't even notice when the weight of her mane began to lessen and barely registered when Pearl's face appeared by her side. Get up. Huh? Vinyl blinked at her. I'm gonna cut your tail now, honey. I need you to stand so I can swivel this here chair sideways. Oh, uh, sure. Vinyl stood and levitated the chair herself, switching the tall back so that it faced right. When she set it down, Pearl insisted she shuffle backwards until her tail and most of her butt hung over the edge of the seat. It ain't the best position to be in, I'll admit. Pearl studied Vinyl for a moment. Not the most attractive. Still, it's what we got to work with. Lean your elbows on the edge of the bed and put your head on them. This might take a while. Some of these splits go right down the middle of your tail. She sucked in air between her teeth and chunted to herself as she worked. Vinyl did as she was bade. It was a deceptively comfortable position, she found, 
and Pearl's muttering provided a soothing aural backdrop alongside the whirring ceiling fan. So soothing, in fact, that her eyelids began to droop. She forced her eyes back open, staring straight ahead at the lump of Octavia's hind legs. She suddenly remembered how Tavi had shown her the proper stance and made her practice, practice, practice before the Academy audition. She remembered the feel of Tavi's hooves along the back of her thighs, shifting her left leg into a better place. It's, it's more, more stable, stable this way if you're if going, you're going to, be to be on two legs, legs instead, instead of four. Of four. Ugh, this, this feels, feels weird. weird. I hate I being hate on two, two legs. legs. Can, Can I just, I just use, use magic, magic to play instead? instead? No, no, you no, cannot. cannot. The, board the board are looking board for skill, skill, not, not showboating. Show show uh, but I'm uh, good I'm with good magic. magic. I, suck I suck at holding, holding a bow or pressing bow strings with my hoof. It's too fiddly. You do, you do not, not suck. suck. I've heard, I've heard you play. You play. You're, you're remarkably good. good. You have, you have natural, natural talent. talent. Now, now stop, stop trying, trying to convince yourself you're awful. awful. I, know I know you're trying to make yourself feel better, better for if things, things go wrong. wrong. But that, but that kind of thinking, thinking is counterproductive, not, not to mention counterintuitive. Someone's been learning her vocabulary sheet. Oh, oh, hush. hush. I, just I just want, want us, us to be, be perfect. perfect. You already are. I'm a screw-up. You, you are not a screw-up. Screw uh, 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 wow. wow. Octavia, Octavia, no need to yell. yell. I'm, I'm sorry, sorry, but, 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 but uh, it, it does, does annoy me how you, how you always, always put yourself put down, down so much. So much. You're, not You're not a screw-up, screw nor, nor an imbecile, nor a failure, nor, nor anything like that. You just have self-confidence issues, that's all. Oh, really? oh really? really? When did, when you, did you get you your get diploma, diploma Dr. Dr. Philharmonica? Oh, oh, never mind. mind. I, can I can see you're going, going to be obtuse, obtuse today. today. If you, if you insist, insist on that, that then, then there really is no is point in no continuing point to, practice to practice like this. Tavi, wait, wait, wait. Do I stand like this? Move your right leg back a smidgen. Like this? Better. You'll be, You'll be great, great okay? Okay, okay, okay? Believe, Believe in, in me, me, if not, not in yourself. In yourself. Easier said than done, but, but, but I'll try, okay? okay, okay, okay. That's, That's the best, the best I, can I can do. do. I'll, try. I'll try. I'll try, okay? I'll try. Try. Try what? Vinyl's head snapped up. Had she spoken out loud? The room seemed darker. Oh no, had she fallen asleep after all? I repeat, try what? That voice. It wasn't Pearl's. Slowly, Vinyl turned her head. A pony stood behind her. It wasn't Pearl. Pearl was long gone, just like the sunshine through the window. Just like the window. And the ceiling fan. And the ceiling. And the floor. And the edges of the room. The pony stared at her expectantly. Vinyl swallowed hard. P princess Luna! To be continued.